There we go. Don't bang the desk because you're going to screw the CD up. That's all I ask. Okay. okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young. The final day of September, the final September edition, what a year it has been. The first eight months of Topic Time have been incredible in 2021 and having my 12th, uh, coming into my 12th year after having my 11th anniversary on August 18th. And we have an awesome show tonight, an author, a local author of the, you know, with a book on the occult and whatnot, and we're going to talk about that in a few seconds. But before I get to him, I'm going to read these great underwriters, and then we will uh, commence with the show. And one of them is actually... Uh, the woman who brought him on board, uh, Laurie Parker, who did, the Brock Enterprise just did a great article about it in her antique store. So we'll cover that as we go on. So we got Vape Solutions in East Bridgewater. We got Manny's Auto Repair in Taunton. We got Brighter Days Hair Salon in Taunton. We got Britain Tire Service in Brockton. We got Auto Town Auto Glass installed in Abington. We got Sweezy Fence Erectors in Whitman. See Sweezy Fence Erectors LLC in Whitman. We got Lynch's Towing Auto Cycle and Truck Center in Brockton. One number for projects, one number for towing. We got John's Greenhouses and Florist Shop in Brockton. And we got Mrs. Swift's and More Antique Shop in Collectibles in East Bridgewater. And that's Laurie Parker. And, and uh, they've been doing the ghost tour for 12 years. I'm going to talk all about that. Uh, this is all part of that deal. We got Easton Fitness right here in the Village Shops in Northeastern. We got Doggy Boutique, All Breed Professional Grooming uh, for Dogs and Cats, run by my great next door neighbor, Debbie Siddell in Brockton. We got the Gun Runner LLC in Middleborough, dedicated to your Second Amendment rights. We got Grant's Rental in Bridgewater, and we got Joe's Diner in Taunton. I want to thank you guys very much. And now, on that note, I will officially introduce Mr. Wayne Nye, the author of this incredible book, Faces in the Window, about, uh, East, about some paranormal phenomena in East Bridgewater, Mass. And we've got some pictures that we're going to look at and talk about. Uh, but before we do that, first I want to thank you, Wayne, for coming in today and uh, breaking breaking away from work early. Um, and this is going to be a fascinating show. And uh, and again, thanks for being early. Thank you for having me. Okay. Now we've been trying to get you on. We wanted to get you on at the at, at the at middle of March of 2020, and then all of a sudden the virus hit, and then we went on hiatus for four months. So that couldn't happen. Um, but what I do with every guest, I mean, we're going to talk about your book and everything else that you've done. But I also want to find out about you specifically. That's what I do with everybody that I interview. So please tell me about where you grew up. I assume you're a local man. You, you know, you're in the area. Um, what, what you were like as a kid. What, what prompted you to be interested in the paranormal, which you obviously are, and you've obviously covered it pretty well. So talk about that, and if I have any questions, I'll roll them in, and then we'll roll ahead to the present day. So go on. I grew up in Brockton, Mass. I'm Same a Brockton here. native. Okay. Um, in my childhood, I was always interested in old buildings and old houses. Okay and uh, local history, yep. and then I started getting into antiques at a very young age, All right. and I frequented many of the local antique shops here in the uh, Bridgewaters, right. and I stumbled upon Mrs. Swift's and more antiques. How long ago? Uh, back in 2006. Okay, so 15 years. And Going to her shop, I was also into genealogy, so I told her that I'm looking for photographs because a lot of antique shops sell the little old-fashioned photos, and come to find out, we were distantly related. So a Who friendship, was distantly related? You and Larry? Larry Parker and myself. Oh, no kidding. Never knew that. So a friendship evolved out of that. Okay. And then the, the house that they were located in at um, 741 Bedford Street in Elmwood, Mass., her sister sold the house, and then... The town of Elmwood? Yeah, uh, yes, it's part of East Bridgewater. Yeah, I know, it's, it's where that um, post office is. Yes. Okay, I know, what you, I know exactly what you mean. Right, and, off, right in the corner of 106 and 18. Yes, Got on it. the corner of uh, Bedford and East Street. Yep, okay. And I pulled into the driveway of the shop one day, and the house was empty, the shop was closed, and okay. I hadn't seen Laurie. So I started to go to Plymouth Antique Shops, and I was at one particular shop, Main Street Antiques, and ran into Lori there. Okay. And she said she was just looking for another shop because her sister sold the house. Okay. So then I was at the antique shop where the Elmwood Post Office is, and I said to the lady, it's a shame that all the antique shops around here closed. Right, and that one is still, that one is still on, that is not a, not a running antique shop to, to this day, correct? The one in El, the Elmwood building? There's one next to the Elmwood Post Office. I think it's called C and C Antiques or Collectibles. So it is, but I'm just wondering because I've been in there. I mean, I've been by it, and I've, I've often wondered if anyone's in there, but I've never seen anybody in there. I ventured in there once. It is open. It I is. don't know what its okay. hours are. All right. 
But go on, so talk about... But then about the lady mentioned uh, Mrs. Swift's and more antiques. I okay. said that was across the street at Close, and then she told me of the new location, which was you down on West, West Union, Union Street. Union street. Yep, yep. And I went down, and then me and Lori started our friendship up again, and she started telling me these stories about the building, and I was just completely taken by the story she was telling me, and I became obsessed with the building. Okay. Well, when you say you're obsessed with old buildings, are you because, is it because you think they're haunted or just because you like the way they look? Well, I wasn't into, because of the law. Because of historical Because reasons. of the historical yeah, okay. purposes. I wasn't into paranormal then, but okay. I remember driving by that building when, with my father when I was little. Okay. And then when Lori told me a couple of stories that happened in the shop, I just became obsessed with the building. <laughs> Those are quite, quite vivid stories, aren't mm, they? Quite. Okay. All right, well, tell me, all right, now... Now what I want you to do, now you wrote this book, Faces in the, in the Window, and when did you write this, and how long did it uh, take you? In 2019, I wrote the book, and that was after six years of in-depth and detailed research. research. Okay, and what did that research entail? Uh, going to different libraries, going through the newspapers, um, going through old books in the town, okay. stories Basically all about East, the, the occult and paranormal phenomena, paranormal phenomena in East Bridgewater, correct? Uh, correct. Okay. Because I've heard some some zinger stories about like the, the town hall is haunted. They say this, they say that the, the elevator all, all operates by itself when mm -hmm. everyone's left for the day. I haven't been in the town hall. I've been in the library, and I've I've heard parts of that building are haunted too. We actually uh, conducted several uh, paranormal team, Massachusetts Area Paranormal Society, actually have investigated several locations in East Bridgewater, including the town hall. Yep the uh, East Bridgewater Public Library and the former Carver Cotton Gin Factory down on um, Whitman and Plymouth Streets. Okay, going to, okay, I, I, I think I know where that is. All right, and they've discovered some pretty wild things that have we been going had some on, pretty, like those orbs. You know, all kinds of things, uh, footsteps, we've captured a lot of voices on the EVP recorders. Okay. And had a lot of experiences with the team at these various locations. Okay, great. All right. So what so what exactly do you focus on in this book? Let's talk about that. This is this is this is you know, you wanted to cover the book and let's cover it. You brought some pictures with you. This book itself is all based on this building here, okay. which is the former Masonic building for Setucket Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons. Okay. They actually had this building built back in eighteen ninety two. It was dedicated on October 22nd, 1892. So the anniversary's coming up soon. Yes. Is that the one on East West Union Street? Yes. It is. This, this is actually oh, where okay. Laurie Shaw is. I know is it on is. The yep, right yep. I know exactly where it is. I was there last Friday. But we've had a lot of things happen here over the years, and that's where the title of my book comes from, Faces in the Window. Okay. Back in 2006, December, Laurie just moved into the shop okay. at 12 West Union. And she had the window all dolled up for the holiday season. And two girls that lived across the street from the shop received a digital camera for Christmas. So they were taking a walk late one night and walked by. And they snapped three photographs in sequence of the front window. And when they looked at the viewfinder, there were approximately 50 faces pressed up against the window looking out at them. Wow. So they were hesitant to show Lori the picture be or the, on their the picture on their viewfinder because Lori had just moved into the building and they didn't want to startle her. Eventually they showed Lori and she actually witnessed the photograph with the faces looking out and once I heard that story I became obsessed with the building. Okay. And that's where the title of the book came from. Okay, are you, so are you talking about the windows where Laurie's shop is? That's where the one... The Her one, former shop. Former she was shop. actually it was, it, was same, at, it was also West Union Street. It was like the next... next well, next it's in the same... Open. It was in the same building. Okay. She was at 12 West Union, okay. which was here. Now, now she's here. And then she moved over to 16, 16 West Union. Right. It's in yep. the same building. Now the barber shop's there, I think. The barber shop is... There was two shops on that end of the building. The antique shop, the barber shop. And then there's another shop on the other end where she currently is located. Right. Wow. Okay. So, so, you, so did you do you have pictures of those faces on that in that book there? There is a photograph in the book. It shows pictures that were taken at is it, midnight. Isn't, that, isn't this it here? Those are just masks that we oh, okay. put up to simulate the faces. All right. Well, take a, let's show. Let's look at that picture that you're talking about. Is, that, is this the one that those girls took with their little? No. This is a picture that was taken. When we first started going there, taking pictures through the windows. Okay. And this is one photograph 
or it's three actually in sequence, where you can see the faces and the mirror here looking out. Wow, okay. Let me see. Okay. And then the one in the upper left hand corner starts to turn red, and then in the last photograph, it is all the face is completely red. Okay, that's fascinating. All right, very good. Amazing. Okay, now, um, it, it does look a little uh, hazy though, but I guess that's because it was at night. Ah, uh, they, they look pretty clear. We actually brought them to another well-known paranormal group in Rhode Island who were demonologists because of the color of the face. We thought it was something demonic, but they just explained to us that it was the entity changing temperature. Okay. It was he, not demonic. Well, whoever did, whoever did your, your illustrations did a great job. And who published your book? That was uh, Harding Print in Whitman, Mass. Okay, right, Whitman, sure. Yeah, they oh. did a great job. They did. Okay, so now you wrote this book uh, in two years ago, it took you, 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 you actually, you did the whole book in 2019. Well, I, I wrote, I started writing about the whole area, the building, including all the investigations yep. in the area. Okay. And they were all going into one book. Then we decided to just do it on the building. So I still have enough stuff to write a second book. Are, are you going to eventually? I plan to eventually, yes. Okay. All right. So tell me about the ghost tour. I mean, that's something, that's a pretty big deal. I know that she, she, she it must be going up right, going on right now. Well, I don't know with COVID, but I mean, I, as it has, has she, I'm not sure. We talked the other day, but Larry and I did when I went in there. Um, are they are they starting it up again or is, well, we, with masks this, and stuff? This would have been our thirteenth year. Yeah, yeah. And the cemetery commission decided after twelve years they no longer wanted us passing through the cemetery grounds. Okay. Although we donated funds to them every year, and we also had um, liability insurance in case anyone got hurt on the tour. Right. I mean, it's a very historic cemetery. Where, is that the one? In, where is that one? It's on Central Street. It's called um, Central Cemetery. Central. I'm, I may walk in that cemetery. I like walking in cemeteries. It's uh, diagonally across from the town hall. Oh, no. Okay. I, I, I do walk in that cemetery. It's right across from the police station. Yes. Oh, yeah. I walk in yes. there all the time. I walked there a couple of weeks ago. Well, one of Lizzie Borden's lawyers is buried there. Okay. Arthur Sherman Phillips. Wow. And then Francis Davis Millett, renowned artist um, who went down on the Titanic, is buried there in the cemetery as well. Okay. Have you? I'm just wondering if you... you, not when you all right. Now, in terms of, you know, I know you, you, you guys deal with the paranormal and ghosts. Have you ever actually communicated or done any like seances, anything where you communicate with specific spirits of specific people, like the ones you just mentioned? Um, we do. We, we do have a psychic that does table tipping in the what we call the Victorian parlor of Mrs. Swift's and more antiques. Which okay, is that the one? Up, is that the one upstairs or in the basement? No, it's in the back room. Oh, in the back room. Okay, yes, I used the bathroom there once. I think I have. I must have. She passed does. It table tipping there yep, and okay. spirits have come through to the table and there was one in particular I went on the 123rd birthday of the building and all kinds of spirits from the building were coming through the psychic to me okay. thanking me for my work and wow. doing the tour and one spirit actually was narrating the ghost tour in sequence and the psychic had never been on the ghost tour Okay. and then he said to the psychic hurt woman want to fix her and then she said his energy was earthbound. We said, do you need help going into the light? And he walked away from the table. And we believe that was a gentleman that lived in this capacious home where the front part of Central Cemetery is. Okay. His name was Kimball Sheldon. Yep. And he married a woman named Mary Smith who lived in a house where the Masonic building is. Okay. And it burnt down. And he actually killed his wife and then himself back in 1908. Wow. We believe that it was his energy that came through because we tell his story on the ghost tour. Wow. Okay. And when, just from saying her at woman want to fix her, so we, and the psychic said he was earthbound, so he was probably ashamed to go into the light. So we believe that it's Mr. Sheldon's energy that was, came through that day at the table. So he him. feels bad about killing his wife all those years ago. Yes. Oh, okay. That's pretty fascinating. Well, uh, that is that. When was this picture taken? How long ago? I'm not sure what year it was taken. The house was built in 1865, and yep. then the cemetery bought it in 1936 and raised it so they could use the land for the extension of the cemetery. Okay. Um, so you know. Okay. So you think this had to? You think this had to have been like 100 years ago? Or um, the photograph? Yeah. The murder occurred in 1908, so right. it was probably around that time. So the, the house doesn't even exist taken. anymore, right? No, it okay. does not. Wow. So now he's a very well preserved photograph. Okay, did he say why he killed his wife? Um, there, the story, there was a story in the paper, they said he lost a lot of money okay. because of 
uh, bad land speculations, but a lot of things that were in the story didn't make sense. Okay, all right. As far as what they were stating. In but the is this? Story. But he's but he's at, but uh, he's allegedly come come to life or. or his spirit has come to life and talked to the psychic and people on the ghost tour. We believe that was him okay. that came through at the table tipping. And then that week, when we were doing the ghost tour, we go into the building. We have it set up like a morgue because yeah. there were two undertakers in the building. Okay. And as we were leaving, there was a loud bang in the corner, and everyone turned and looked, and we didn't see anything, so we left. But when we came back after the tour to change, there was a large religious statue, and it was... If you jumped around and moved, it would have fell forward. The statue went in the totally opposite direction and landed like two feet away from the table, and the head came off. Wow. It was like something slapped at it. If, if it fell, it would have went straight forward. It wouldn't have went the opposite way. So you basically think it seems like that's, there, was a, there was an extra paranormal uh, force that moved the statue and Correct. knocked it over. Wow. Yes, that's in the book. It shows it laying on the floor. Woo, crazy. Okay. I talk about that. Okay, let's talk. Look at, let's look at all the pictures you got there, because I want to. I want to definitely make sure we get get all. Get this is all another one when uh, we found out that Lori mm -hmm. sh had paranormal activity in her shop. It's actually the whole building. Right. Um, I asked if me, my sister, and her boyfriend could do an overnight paranormal investigation, so she agreed and gave us the keys. Okay. And while we were in the shop. I was in the center of the shop, my sister was in the front, and her boyfriend was in the rear of the shop. Yep. And all the, sh originally the sh ceilings were 12 feet high, and they lowered them with drop ceilings to make it more energy efficient. Okay. And while we were there, it was totally dark, we could hear what sounded like either pressure or crackling on the ceiling coming okay. from above. Right. So we all gathered near the cash register, and I took an old wooden stool and stood on it, and pushed the sailing panel up. And when I did that, a cold, frigid breeze came out from above the sailing. Okay. I stuck my hand in and snapped a photograph. And this is what was captured in the photo. A large, luminous cloud shining wow. beams of light down towards the, the, the sailing. But yeah. if you look at the very front of it, it looks like a face with the mouth open and yeah, something yeah. coming out of the mouth. Okay. And or, or then my it. sister's boyfriend was pushed right after this. Okay. Now you're talking about the whole building, because I know it's in the building. Aside from the lobby shop, there's the barber shop, and I believe there's a dance studio. There's a next door to the barber shop, I think there's a dance studio. Uh, that's in the, the uh, next building. The next right. building. But what I, so what I'm wondering is, has anybody else in the building that you were aware of had experienced these things as well that, you're, that, that, that you've um, talked to or not? A social club owns the building, the Ideal Club, and they've had experiences upstairs. Yeah, okay. The uh, president was sitting at his desk one day with the door open into the second floor landing, okay. and he saw a figure go across the landing. So he's like, hello, hello. And no one answered, so we got up and went out there, and he's looking around. He went up to the third floor. There was no one there. That happened to him a few times. Okay, is this all, are these occurrences mostly at night, or is it, could it be at any there time of day? Things have happened in the shop in the daytime, in okay. the antique shop. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, now, Laurie, I mean, she's a feister, feisty one. You know what happened to her a couple of years ago. She, you know, had to... She had an emergency heart surgery, and now she's doing great. That was actually on the tour, the last yeah, night yeah, of the ghost okay. tour when that happened, and she walked off, and I'm like, what's going on? And they said she was having a medical issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did continue the tour, and we met up with her afterwards, and, but she didn't think it was anything you know, critical, so she waited a few days before she went to the hospital, and she wound up having to have... Uh, New valve, I guess. Yes, wow. yes. Well, she's doing great now. Yes, I'm so she happy. Is. And she even called me afterwards to let me know, and I'm so happy that, you know, that, that I, when I found that out, I, hadn't, I wasn't sure how she was doing. I know I'd gone in there, and they told me that she had that, that situation going yes. on. All right, let's talk about the chapters of your book. Mm -hmm. I got to, I'm looking at the chapters. You got the, and I'm, so you got the beginning, the keys. The, all right, so let's, let's go over each chapter. Okay, that's so just fine. Talk, what's the beginning? What's that? The beginning is how everything started with the book, like how I first started going to that area and okay. going to the antique shop. Okay. Um, that's like in detail, different people that I met in the neighborhood okay. when I first started going there. Okay, now what's the, the next one is the keys. What's the keys? The keys is when Lori gave me the key to do the overnight investigation. Okay, you mentioned that, yep. And it has, each chapter is very detailed about the, the, the time period of everything. Okay. 
All right, delving into the history of the property, that's like about the Masons? That's, well, that's the extensive history of the building, all the tenants that were in there since it was built. Okay. It, it's very in detail of everything that was in there. Go all the way back to 1892? Till they, since they built it, yes, okay. 1892 to the present. To the present, okay. All right, uh, becoming part of the village. What's, that's, becoming that's part of the historical. village. Yep. Um, East Bridgewater Center was called East Bridgewater Village. Okay. So I be started becoming friendly with all the different business owners and neighbors, and it, then once they found out my intentions, I started receiving stories about different other buildings located near the Masonic building that was haunted. Oh, cool, okay. Uh, the, Free the Freemasons in the Setucket Lodge, uh, AF, AF and F, AF and AM, what's that? Setucket Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons. They were the ones that had the building built, so okay. it's an in-depth chapter on Setucket Lodge, the Freemasons, with a lot of their photographs and different uh, terms they use in the Masonic language. I'm not, what exactly is this Mason? What is a Mason? It's a real, it's, I know it's a, it's a religious cult, I it's believe, It's a right? Freemason. It's a fraternal organization. Okay, is it based on Christianity? I'm not sure of... Okay, you're not suppose, sure. Either. Supposedly, it is. There's a lot of good things about them, and then you hear a lot of bad things about them. Yeah, that's about that. Pretty much applies to every religion. Yeah, okay. so I do that chapter is okay. in detail about Setucket okay. Lodge. Okay, the Undertakers. What's that? Uh, there were two different Undertakers in the building over the years. The first one was William S. Prophet and John Flynn, who okay. were in the building in 1902 to 1903. Okay. And then David Ross Drake followed in 1908, and oh. he was a very peculiar character who was there. He went from town to town with his undertaking, then he left and went to La Crosse, Wisconsin, to Providence, and then he wound up passing at the age of 47, but he was very peculiar. Okay, I know peculiar. The candle experiment, what's that? <clears throat> that is when, like, water is a conductor of energy and spirits need energy to manifest. Okay. So they can use the energy from running water. The same with a candle. They can use the heat from the candle. Okay. So we tried an experiment and actually stuck a candle in the back with dolls and lit the candle. Yep. And the flame would burn straight up. Then when it would move like something was there, I'd snap pictures and we got all these different figures okay. in the pictures. I did bring one candle experiment okay. photograph. Throw it up. That's wow. in the hallway. We were having a psychic medium come the Halloween Eve. Okay. So I lit a candle in the second floor hallway and I was taking pictures. All of a sudden something hit my right shoulder and knocked me backwards. The camera went flying. Okay. And I'm like, what the heck was that? So I went and retrieved the camera. When I looked at the viewfinder, this is the picture. Okay. There's a wow. large orb oh, almost, there almost out of the picture, but I caught it. Right here. This is actually um, a friend of mine who was supposed to come to the psychic evening with his girlfriend, and he actually got killed by a train the week before. Wow. So I took, I took the I went down the street with the camera, I developed this picture and stuck it in my pocket. There were like 40 people at the show with the psychic and she said, a gentleman just walked in the room and everyone's looking around but you couldn't see anyone. So she said, there's a guy here, he was in a high impact accident, his name begins with a soft G or a J. And I raised my hand, I said, my friend Joe is supposed to be here tonight. And she goes, hold on, let me get some information from him. Okay, this is him, he wants, you to tell, he wants me to tell you he's okay. He's with an older lady and a younger girl, and I know his mother and sister had passed before him. Wow. She goes, he's here, he's okay. He was, he was in a high impact accident, and I said he was hit by a train. And she said, he's telling me that you took a picture of him earlier in the day, and if you look in the lower left-hand corner, he's in the picture. So this is the photograph that was taken. So it was him that knocked me over in the hallway to try to startle me. Okay, just to let you know he was okay. Yes. Okay, after, the, after getting killed in the train wreck. All right. Uh, the unexpected visitor, I assume that was him. That was him, correct. All right, correct. that's the next one. Uh, an, even, an evening to die for, next chapter. We actually, Laurie actually sponsored a murder mystery dinner upstairs. Okay. It was 14 vaudeville acts put on by the Bridgewater State College Ensemble Theater. That must have been fun. Uh, I didn't know you had that much room up there. It was a blast. There's big halls on the second and the third floor. I'll have to get upstairs and see yes. it next time. Maybe I'll stop in tomorrow. I'm going to be in the neighborhood anyway. <laughs> All right, uh, Masonic Block, the investigation, that's the whole block. That's when we investigated with the psychic, and okay. that was a pretty scary investigation in different parts of the building. Well, scary because of all this stuff that's, you know. Well, she, uh, 
several psychics said there were bodies buried in the basement. Yes, yes, we were talking about that last week. <laughs> and um, yeah. actually, we will be, I can't say too much on it, but we will be on a national paranormal show in the coming months uh, regarding the building. I can't say too much more about that. Can you say that. what channel it's going to be on? I can't, I can't divulge it. We'll post it on our website when it's time. Okay, uh, there's three more chapters. We just want to, no such thing as coincidence. I think that's almost self-explanatory. Yes, correct. Okay. East Bridgewater Historic Ghost Tour, and that's that's probably what, what, what we're what talking about. We talked about. about, yes. And the big move, number three, that's the final chapter. When Laurie moved from 12 West Union to the other side of the building, 16 West Union Street. Okay, turned out to be a pretty big move. Well, guess what? We're down to the final five minutes of the show, and, and we, okay. made, we made it go by. I hope we covered as much as we could. We got some good pictures here. Um, so like I told you before at the beginning, what I want you to do is look at the camera, give shouts out to people. You can start with Laurie, any members of your family, people in the paranormal world that you that you talk with, any psychics, and then we'll wrap the show up with my music like we began it. Well, just hello to everyone that uh, has supported us over the past 12 years with the Ghost Tour and supporting Mrs. Swift's and More Antiques, where these books are available if anyone is interested. Um, and that's about it. Just thank you for being with us all that time. Okay, well, I hope you have fun with me. Of course I have fun. Okay, I hope you, all right. So the other thing I ask all my upcoming guests to do is if they did have fun with me is if you have friends or anyone that you know that has an interesting story, and obviously you probably know a lot of people that do. For sure. Have them contact me because I love getting, that's, I've been getting so many guests through word of mouth lately. It's been really going well like that. I would gladly do that. And, and that would be great. Um, any of the, you know, the people, it, it, any of the people in the, 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 the vaudevillians from, from Bridgewater State, I would love to have some of them on if they're interested okay. in doing a sh show, especially the young ladies if they're... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it sounds, that's kind of what I'm thinking. But, uh, or anybody, just somebody that's... That, and then we'll hear their side of the story, too. Now, is there anything going forward that you want to mention that's, you know, besides that, uh, that documentary that's coming up that's a part of anything else going on coming up in the near future that you, want, you might have uh, overlooked? Just table tipping, which Lori does. They have to be booked with the psychic medium, Kate okay. Otto McCooch. Cool. Um, those are very interesting if you get a chance to do one of what those. Is that? Table tipping is when they actually levitate the table? You sit around a table with the psychic and put your fingers on the table. Almost like a Ouija board thing? Yes, okay. and the table actually moves. Cool. And, People come through, like people's loved ones come through to the psychic. So it's a seance, basically. Uh, yes and no, in a way. Well, I mean, it's supposed to bring back the people. It's yes, a, uh, yes. Okay, all right. Well, but that those are pretty interesting. Those are ongoing. You have to book them at the shop with Laurie. Okay, that's cool. All right, well, you did a great job, Wayne. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. Thank Yeah, and uh, so that's it. Uh, again, you know, thanks for coming in. Being a, you're, very, you're an amazing uh, writer and... Uh, and I know, you, I know you're always going to be thorough in your investigations, and, and just keep, keep up the great work. Thank you very much. All right. Well, great job, Wayne. Thanks for watching. Now we're going to wrap it up now, folks. Thanks for watching. Top of time. See you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Enjoy the fall. All right. <laughs>